welcome everyone to our solar photovoltaic course. Today we are having our 7th week lectures on perovskite single crystal. In the last lecture, if you remember, we have started talking about the perovskite single crystal and what are the advantage of the perovskite single crystal over the their bulk counterpart. And we have seen that since the number of trap state or the defect state is less in the perovskite single crystal, so its optical properties and electrical properties are superior than its bulk counterpart. And for that reason, it is useful for fabricating some solar cell devices, some lasers devices as well as some detector based devices. Now, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the different application of the perovskite single crystal for solar cell, detector and the lasers. Now, some of the applications of the perovskite single crystal are semiconducting materials have very special optical and electronic properties. They are the base of sensor detectors, CPU etc. Hybrid perovskite possess great optoelectronic properties and shows great potential in solar cells, laser, photodetectors etc. So, perovskite single crystal has been used to make light emitting diode and photodetectors and also they have been used in different IC circuits also. For example, in solar cell as is semiconducting material with a large absorption coefficient and long carrier diffusion length, solar cells should be the best model device to show their advantage which are similar to a perovskite single crystal. However, there are obstacles in the direct use of a large single crystal. So, one of the research group like Huang's group, they built a solar cell device including a semi-transparent gold perovskite gallium device, but this delivered minimal photovoltaic response. The main reasons for the low response are the photon generated carriers could not be fully collected in a thick device as well as the high intrinsic resistance of the perovskite material will bring ohmic loss via a thick absorber layer. Thus, the thin single crystalline film in which photon generated carriers will transport a short length are urgently needed to build a single crystalline perovskite solar cell, which shows the potential use of the single crystalline material. And the another research group, the Backer group developed a CTSE strategy to prepare thin single crystalline perovskite film at the micrometer scale. The solar cell with 1 micron thick single crystalline film showed the best photovoltaic performance, which we are showing in the next graph. You can see that <coughs> there are different geometry for making the perovskite single crystal as shown in the following figure. Uh, here uh, the, the perovskite single crystal has been sandwiched between a gold electrode and a gallium electrode okay, and uh, the light falls from the semi transparent gold electrode and uh, the corresponding structure is showing here. You see that the glass and then there is a uh, perovskite MAPB BR3 which have been sandwiched between the gold and the gallium things. And the corresponding, uh, you can also put like if you do not have the gallium, you can also use ITO or FTO. So, basically, FTO, TIO2, MEPBI3 single crystal 1 micron and the gold, and that is the photovoltaic response. And uh, MEPBI3 single crystal also people have done by sequential end doping and P doping, and there they got a response like that. So, uh, these figures, like you know, figure number A that is a thick single crystalline perovskite solar cell with semi transparent gold electrode as the whole transport layer and gallium electrode as the electron transport layer. Now, the second curve B that is the JV curve of the solar cell which we have fabricated in the A. Now, figure number C is the device structure of a single crystal MAPBR3 film deposited solar cell and its photovoltaic performance. D is the effect of the single crystal MAPBR3 thickness on the photovoltaic performance of the single crystal solar cells and finally, E is the schematic illustration of a lateral structure single crystalline perovskite solar cell and its photovoltaic performance. So, uh, as you can see and if you uh, look at the performance of the pure polycrystalline perovskite film with the perovskite single crystal, we can see that uh, still the performance of the film is not as expected as its optical and electrical properties demand it to be. And the reason behind it is that it is very difficult to grow the perovskite single crystal uniform film on a substrate or in a device geometry. But there are a lot of research groups which are working on it to make a very uniform and large perovskite single crystal which will be useful for the solar cell device. Increasing the absorber thickness from 4 to 10 micron will increase the serial resistance of the device and reduce the field factor. When a 60 micrometer thick single crystal film was used, the JSC, VOC and field factor decreased dramatically because the charge carrier cannot be corrected efficiently. To overcome the drawbacks of this high intrinsic resistance, one of these research group, the Huang group designed and prepared a lateral structure single crystal perovskite solar cell. Instead of collecting carriers in the vertical direction, carriers need to be transported through a thick absorber layer. The carrier was harvested in the lateral direction during which the charge transport 
length is reduced and the collection efficiency could be effectively enhanced giving a photovoltaic performance of 1.88 percent but you can still say that it is much lower in comparison to the bulk counterpart. However, the gold electrode were used for both the cathode and anode the PIN regions were created by electric polling which will introduce defects or crystal distortion increasing the carrier recombination. Now, in the both side if you use gold electrode then there is nothing to extract the charge carrier that is why they have done the electric polling. It is reasonable to expect that the PC of the lateral single crystal line perovskite solar cell could be further improved using more efficient hole and electron transport layer. Now, one of the important application which we will discuss before completing this lecture is the photo detectors. Now, beyond solar cell the beneficial optical and charge transport properties of the perovskites have enabled their successful deployment as photo detectors. Now, we have all used photo detectors in all kind of optical and electronic circuits whether it is a PMT or whether it is a CCD or whether it is a silicon photodiode we have seen that these photo detectors have been used again and again in various optical and electronic devices. Now, this perovskite single crystal can also be useful for making the photo detectors not only in the optical range, but sometimes it can also be extended in the X-ray range also. Now, photo detectors have been widely employed in video imaging, optical communication, environmental monitoring and biomedical sensing by using semiconductors as light absorption and charge transport materials. Photo detectors have the potential to transfer background electromagnetic waves into the electronic signal and provide useful and important data for automatic control, information transportation, medical diagnosis, etc. Depending on how the generated carriers are utilized, current photo detectors can be classified as a photoconductive or photovoltaic. The performance of photo detectors, such as their responsivity, response speed, and detectivity, are closely associated with the intrinsic properties of the semiconductors. Although rapid and tremendous advance have been achieved in polycrystalline perovskite film photo detectors in recent years, single crystal perovskite thin films possess superior advantages such as the absence of grain boundaries, fewer defects and longer charge carrier lifetimes which are supposed to contribute to improvements in the detector performance. Okay. Now, whenever we talk about any detectors, so what are the properties of a detector we look about? We look for its responsivity, we look for its response speed, we look for its detectivity and also some of the intrinsic properties of the semiconductor. Now, there are different semiconducting material like silicon, gallium arsenide these have been used to make a photo detectors. But if you use perovskite single crystal as a photo detectors then all of these detection properties like responsivity, response speed and detectivity that changes significantly in comparison to the bulk counterpart. So, that is why perovskite single crystal has been widely used to fabricate a photo detector material. Photoconductive detectors in a photoconductive photo detectors symmetrical electrodes such as gold material gold. So, you see that the material has been sandwiched between the two gold electrode or silver material silver where the material has been sandwiched between the two silver electrode or ITO material ITO where the material has been sandwiched between the two ITO electrodes are deposited onto the working materials. While working the device current is monitored by applying a voltage bias on the symmetrical electrode which is an important parameter to evaluate the device performance. According to Ohm's law I is equal to V by R a variation of resistance will result in current changes. Turning the light on and off will make the carrier concentration of the device vary dramatically which will result in a large difference in de device resistance R and corresponding current I. This process will generate a pulse like pattern in the IT curve as shown in the next figure. This will make the electromagnetic wave signal detection possible. A bias voltage is always needed for this type of detector for single crystal perovskites the intrinsic carrier concentration is very low somewhere around 109 centimeter inverse cube. This is a major reason for the observed large resistivity small conductivity approximately 1 into the power minus 8 ohm inverse centimeter inverse. So, here we are showing the photoconductive mode single crystal perovskite as you can see that uh, the photo detectors we are this region is the light on and then there is a light off. So, there is a sequential things of this thing this is a photo current versus time. Similarly, the current versus time has been shown here and then uh, the same photo detectors as I said that it has been used for also the X-ray detection where the Y axis is the X-ray current and X axis is the time. After being excited by photons the carrier concentration will increase dramatically which will alter the resistivity of the single crystalline perovskite. This results in a large difference in device current which could allow single crystal to be used in photoconductive detectors. Equation shows that responsivity of a photo detector is closely related to the carrier concentration variations between the light and dark condition. This results in a large difference in device current which could allow single crystal to be used in photoconductive detectors. 
For example, the responsivity we can write is as I pH where the I photocurrent minus I dark current into the power input into the S the area that is proportional to the N the number of the photocurrent charge carrier minus number of the dark current into the input power into the area. Here R is the responsivity I pH and I dr as the current of the device under light illumination and dark. P input is the power of the incident photons and S is the effective area of the device. So, responsivity of a detector that depends upon the photo current, it depends upon the dark current, it depends upon the input power and it depends upon the area of the detector also. So, the responsivity is inversely proportional to the input power and it is inversely proportional to the area that we expect. If we increase the area, responsivity will decrease. If you have a small area, then the responsivity will increase. And NPH and NDR are the current concentration in light and dark respectively. Under the same photocarrier generation rate with a lower intrinsic carrier concentration, larger responsivity values are seen for the photo detector. From this point of view, the single crystalline perovskites are great candidates for photo detector applications due to their extremely low intrinsic carrier concentration. Using the simple lateral electrode configuration described in the figure, a MAPBI3 based device achieved a responsivity as high as 953 ampere per watt and at EQE as large as 2.22 into 105 percent under a 1 volt bias voltage and 2.12 nanowatts centimeter inverse at 532 nanometer light illumination. The single crystal photo detector showed 100 times higher responsivity and EQ than its polycrystalline counterparts under 1 milliwatt centimeter inverse light illumination. In addition to the high responsivity and EQ, the simple structure photo detector also shows a very fast response time, rise time and decay time with values as small as 74 and 58 microsecond respectively. So, all the other properties is also useful of the perovskite single crystal as far as the detection is concerned. Now, as I said that this, poly, this perovskite single crystal can also work in a photovoltaic mode. Now, what is a photovoltaic detectors? Photoconductive detectors can work without a bias voltage or a photovoltaic detector is simply a solar cell device in which the asymmetrical electrode causing a built in electric field assists the collection of a photon generated carrier. The asymmetrical electrode could form PIN type, PN type or Schottky type junctions to assist with carrier collection. Theoretically, no bias voltage is needed for this type of device. The Yan group built a planar Schottky junction type detector by depositing asymmetrical gold and aluminum electrodes which can facilitate hole and electron collection at each electrode. A PC of 0.79 percent was obtained by this simple device. This device can achieve a responsivity of 0.24 ampere inverse under 0 voltage bias and 1 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per centimeter square at 800 nanometer light illumination. The single rise and decay times were 71 and 112 microsecond respectively. And the Huang group first developed gold mixed slide perovskite gallium structured PIN type detectors which shows a narrow bound response due to a high surface recombination rate. They further optimized the single crystallinity which resulted in a hole and electron mobility as high as 217 and 206 centimeter inverse per volt inverse per second inverse as well as how the product of the mobility and the tau the lifetime that is 1.4 in 20 to the power minus 2 centimeter square volt inverse and a low surface recombination rate of 64 centimeter per second inverse. So, that means not only the product of the mu and tau increase the surface recombination less also reduce or the surface recombination rate also reduce because of this perovskite single crystal. They developed a PIN type X-ray detector also with a configuration of gold MAPBR3, C60, BCP. AG or AU similar to a traditional solar cell structure. Now, in a solar cell structure, we use gold and silver like this is an asymmetry between the two metal electrodes. So, in whenever we are talking about the photovoltaic mode, we are working in an asymmetric device. So, you see that we put gold and silver on the other end right and in between we put the MAPBR3 and then C60 and BCP. C60 is a small molecule, BCP is another small molecule. But when you work in a photoconductive mode, we work in a symmetrical device pattern. The current generated from the X-ray increased linearly with the X-ray dose rate, a sensitivity of 80 micro coulomb GY inverse AR centimeter minus 2 was derived which is more than 10 times higher than that of a cadmium or zinc telluride single crystal X-ray detector and 4 times higher than that of a currently used alpha selenium X-ray detector. Now, in terms of the lasers like perovskite this single crystal has also have been used for fabricating lasers. Hybrid perovskites are high gain materials for lasing because of their high absorption coefficient, high photoluminescence quantum yield, slow agar recombination rate, long carrier diffusion length and low defect density. 
Now, all of these properties we have explained earlier like a high absorption coefficient, right. So, the perovskite single crystal has a very high absorption coefficient and the photoluminescent quantum yield that is the number of photons it can emit per absorbed incident light. So, that is also very high. Since the defect states is lower, the recombination rate is also very lower and the carrier diffusion length is longer and also the defect density of state is lower. So, because of that this perovskite made single crystal are also useful for fabricating lasers because for a laser we are mainly looking for two properties. One is this photoluminescence quantum yield and another is the defect density. Sandwich between spirometed and titanium dioxide a polycrystalline MAPB I3 film still shows a strong amplified spontaneous emission demonstrating its high optical gain. Now, uh, if we have done some basic optics we know that usually uh, the number of the charge carriers in the excited state uh, in an equilibrium is less than the number of charge carrier in the ground state that is a normal condition. But for the lasing to happen the number of the electrons or number of the charge carrier or number of the atoms whatever you say in an excited state should be higher than the number of the ground state a situation called the population inversion. Now, if a population inversion is there in the system then there will be a spontaneous emissions. Now, this amplified spontaneous emissions that is possible in a MAPBI 3 perovskite single crystal when fabricated along with a small molecule like spirometed and titanium dioxide. In addition to high gain material a cavity is also needed to achieve population inversion. Using a gold film and a dielectric film stack the Snaith group produced a polycrystalline perovskite film laser with a threshold of 200 nano joule per centimeter square. While this result is promising the full width at half maximum of the laser emission is small and produced a larger Q factor. This may be a result of the trap state generated by the grain boundaries which will broaden the photoluminescence. To overcome the drawbacks of grain boundaries high quality perovskite nano platelets have been prepared using two step CVT method and used as a grain material. Now, in contrast to the SNES report in which the gold film and the dielectric film stack served as a cavity and the boundary of the nanoplate forms a whispering gallery mode cavity that can utilize successful total internal reflection and provide a high Q factor using a MAPBI 3 nanoplate they can achieve 780 nanometer laser emission with a threshold of 37 microjoule centimeter minus 2 and Q factor of 60, 650. So, you see that here the perovskite single crystal is working in a whispering gallery mode. Okay. And here the lasing has been shown and the lasing threshold is happen like in a very small power intent level. Now, the stability of the perovskite single crystal is also higher than the bulk counterpart. In recent years the performance of halide perovskite devices especially perovskite solar cells has significantly improved at an unprecedented rate which is comparable to that of traditional crystalline silicon solar cells. However, air thermal and photo instability issues have limited their further long term commercial implementation one of the major problem with the perovskite device. Now, uh, for example, the moisture stability moisture is regarded as one of the major reasons for the degradation of perovskite structures and thus the performance of unsealed perovskite devices. For instance, a hydrated product for example, MA4 PBI6 2H2O is formed when water molecule is interact to with PBI3 resulting in structural decomposition and decrease in absorption across the visible spectrum. So, if I make a MAPBI 3 perovskite film and if we just leave it in the normal environment condition what will happen perovskite film will absorb the moisture from the water and they will make a compound this one MAP 4 PBI 6 2 H 2 and it will further degrade and basically the crystal structure of the perovskite is lost and its absorption as well as the charge transport properties will be suffered. In addition to the intrinsic ionic crystal structure the defects that are present in the material is another cheap problem for the degradation of halide perovskites. Accordingly by virtue of the absence of grain boundaries and low defect states single crystal perovskites exhibit superior thermal and moisture stability. A recent study on moisture dependent polycrystalline perovskite stability clearly revealed that the degradation of perovskite was initiated at surface defects and grain boundaries and that single crystal perovskites can be stable in air for several years as a result of so sur low surface defect densities and no grain boundaries. Seen in perovskite single crystal there is a less number of grain boundaries and there are less number of defect state. So, here the thermal stability is also very high in comparison to the polycrystalline film. The power conversion efficiency or the PC 
of a single crystal MEPB I3 based solar cell without encapsulation showed almost no degradation after being stored in air at 23 degrees Celsius and humidity level of 30 percent in the dark for 30 days which was superior to the degradation of the polycrystalline thin film solar cells. So, an experiment was performed and the polycrystalline perovskite solar cell as well as a single crystal perovskite solar cell was kept in the air and it has been found that the single crystal device is more thermally stable than its polycrystalline counterpart. Similarly, the single crystal MEPB BR3 solar cell held 93 percent power conversion efficiency or PC of the initial value after being aged in dry air for 1000 hours. The single crystal CSV BR3 thin films prepared by vapor phase epitaxial growth showcased excellent air and moisture stability after exposure to ambient air with 20 percent relative humidity RH at room temperature for 3 months. What about the thermal stability? Apart from the moisture stability mentioned above, the operating temperature also has a profound influence on the performance of the perovskite device. So, we have seen that perovskite shows a temperature dependent crystal change, crystal structure change. Now, if the temperature of the environment changes, so then the perovskite crystal structure also changes that means the transport properties also changes. Thermally induced phase transitions can be easily triggered in perovskite which sets up another major challenge for future application of perovskite device because different perovskite phases possess distinct optical and charge transport properties. So, if I go from a orthorhombic to tetragonal phase of the perovskite, the optical properties and the electronic properties and charge transport properties will be way different. Decomposition at the grain boundary or surface can occur at relatively low temperatures and are accelerated at elevated temperatures due to corrosive con contaminants which are stored in voids and grain boundaries. Compared with the decomposition temperature of a polycrystalline MPB I3 thin film at 150 degrees Celsius, a single crystal wafer is capable of withstanding high temperatures first underwent 20 percent mass loss of HI at 240 degrees Celsius followed by 6 percent loss of CH3 and H2 component at 3330 degrees centigrade. Moreover, no thermal decomposition signal was observed in crystalline MPB I3 wafer until reaching 300 degrees Celsius. So, instead of MPB I3, if you make FAPB I3. So, then the degradation temperature increase further. So, stability increase further. Single crystal MAPB BR3 and MAPB CL3 also exhibited good thermal stability and their decomposition temperature onsets were reported to be 257 and 214 degrees Celsius respectively. Compared to the organic inorganic hybrid perovskite, all inorganic perovskites possess superior thermal stability due to the absence of the volatile organic components. For example, CSPV BR3 is capable of bearing an ultra high temperature of up to 567 degree Celsius until melting. Therefore, all inorganic single crystal perovskite thin films were more desirable than the their organic counterpart because the optical and electrical properties is more stable here. For example, like you know if I make an all inorganic perovskite single crystal CSPV BR3, so it can goes until 567 degree before it melts. So, this data is obtained from the TGA data thermal gravitometric analysis. Now, since it can withstand a very high temperature, so that is why this kind of perovskite single crystal is more suitable if you are considering a huge temperature variation. The third important factor is the light stability. Now, we have mentioned when we have talked about the perovskite solar cell that the ionic part in the perovskite crystal they start diffusing when the light exposed on it, a property commonly known as the ion migration. Now, that was the intrinsic instability in the perovskite devices. Now, when we make a perovskite single crystal, this ion migration property is also reduced. For example, like you know here the temperature dependent conductivity measurement of MAPB I3 and the quasi 2D BA2 MAPB I3 and perovskite single crystal is shown here. Now, in the case of the perovskite single crystal, the light stability is higher in comparison to their polycrystalline counterpart. And finally, the encapsulation technology has been verified to be an effective strategy to resolve degradation issues caused by humid air, white light instability has been more challenging to address, possible mechanism of the photo induced degradation process have been related to photo induced ion migration and photocatalytic effects caused by damaged contacts between the whole transport layer and metal electrode interface. It has been found that ion migration was success significantly improved under sunlight illumination especially in the case of polycrystalline film. A similar phenomena was also been observed in single crystal MEPB I3 in which the activation energy of ion migration was reduced to 0.33 electron volt under the illumination from the original 0.83 electron volt in dark condition. So, also uh, in a single crystal MEPB I3 film, so what happens the ion migration is observed 
However, a constant slope with an activation energy of 253 milli electron volt was observed in a quasi 2D Ba2 Ma2 PBi3 I10 single crystal perovskite thin film indicating that ion migration is suppressed along the in plane direction. Therefore, the efficiency and stability of perovskite electronic device may be noticeably improved in the absence of ion migration and reduction of the vacancy defects. So, what are the current challenges and outlooks on future developments? Grown methods or growth methods of the single crystal perovskite thin film play a paramount role in determining their optoelectronic properties and final device performance. Now, the perovskite single crystal can grow in several different methods. We have discussed some of this method. Now, this growth method can influence their morphology, can influence their photophysical properties. That is why the optoelectronic properties, especially their device properties can heavily depend on the growth method. In all of the strategies for fabricating halide single crystal perovskite thin film, space confinement is omnipresent in the common solution phase crystal growth method for growing high quality single crystal perovskite thin films. However, the environmental issues caused by the heavy use of organic solvents should be paid more attention. The top down method of slicing bulk crystal to free standing crystal films will inevitably induce surface defect. Therefore, the further exploration of more efficient growth methods for large area and high quality single perovskite thin films is called for. To date, most single crystal perovskite thin film materials have mainly been focused on organic inorganic hybrid perovskite as for example, MAPB BR3 and MAPB I3. Given the instability of the volatile organic component and toxicity of the lead element, candidates for all inorganic and lead free low toxicity compositions are still called for in effective fabrication methods. So, crystal quality of the single crystal perovskite thin film is significantly critical to device performance. It is noted that despite very low trap density in the bulk phase, organic inorganic hybrid single crystal perovskites grown in solution still possess a large number of surface charge trap which are probably generated from the loss of the organic amine ions. So, although the, the volume defect density is less, the surface trap density or the surface charge density still exists due to the loss of the amine group. The resultant substantial surface recombination nullifies the intrinsic superiority of the single crystal leading to unsatisfactory performance. Therefore, besides careful optimization of the bulk crystal quality improvements, the development of rational surface passivation techniques is urgently needed. The optoelectronic performance of single crystal perovskite thin film device is greatly affected by interface engineering, including the interface at the perovskite charge selective layer, perovskite substrate and perovskite metal electrode. Since lattice mismatch between halide perovskite and common substrate, for example, FTO glass would induce lattice strain and thus cause interfacial recombination and poor electrical contract, connection between single crystal perovskite and the substrate deserves to be investigated at the atomic level. To reduce the interfacial lattice strain, the growth substrate needs either careful selection or the construction of a buffer layer. In addition, functional molecular modification of the substrate is an available strategy. Single crystal perovskite thin films have shown significant superiority in terms of their crystal quality and optical and electrical properties that we have already discussed compared to those of their polycrystalline counterparts. The photovoltaic performance is reasonably expected to outcome the record set by polycrystalline perovskite film. In the recent 2-3 years, single crystal perovskite solar cell efficiency has rapidly increased to 17.8 percent. To achieve higher efficiency, more effort is suggested including perovskite composition adjustment, crystal thickness optimization and reducing the amount of surface defects. So, these are the three challenge. One is the perovskite composition adjustment, another is the surface passivation and another is the crystal thickness. Hence, it is an optimistic expectation that the PC of a single crystal perovskite solar cell would increase to 25 percent to 30 percent soon. So, we know that the quasi circular limit, the thermodynamic limit for a single crystal or for a single junction solar cell is 32 percent. Now, uh, those days are not very far when by doing all of this optimization, the perovskite single crystal which touch that number or very close to that number. Direct growth of single crystal perovskite thin film onto functional target substrate as for example, transparent conductive substrate pattern electrodes is regarded as an efficient route for developing highly integrated system while greatly reduce device fabrication complexity. To facilitate such direct growth methods and improve the context to minimize to homic loss, high lattice matching and or continuous interface at the molecular level between the perovskite and charge carrier collectors should be considered in advance. So, what we have learned that there are lot of advantages of using perovskite single crystal like for application in solar cell, application in detectors, application in lasers, but there are also still some challenges. Challenges like compositional mapping, challenges like surface defects and all of these things. So, once 
a optimized method for the crystal growth, a large uniform crystal growth has developed, then it is possible to still improve the efficiency parameters or the efficiency of a solar cell made from the single crystal perovskite films. Thank you.